In our previous video, we explored breast cancer data and ranked the eight clinical features according to their effect on survival. Now, emerging data sets in biomedicine can include many, many more features. For example, tissue samples are characterized by the expression of thousands of genes. So in this video, I'll show you how to explore such data. First, I have to install the bioinformatics add-on into Orange. It's available in the options menu, and Orange just needs to restart quickly after installing an add-on. The next step is loading the data set. We'll explore the Metabrick study. This one includes the survival data of 1,900 patients with primary breast tumors. Each patient sample is characterized by 35 clinical features, as well as the expression of over 24,000 genes. Now, we can take a quick look in the data table widgets. So scrolling to the right, I can see the clinical features and the thousands of gene expression values. I also find the data appropriately includes the time and event columns marked as target features. However, there are two more time and event columns marked as meta features. This is because in this study, they measured the recurrence-free survival time as well as the overall survival. Now, recurrence-free survival time refers to the time until cancer recurrence, and the overall survival refers to the time until breast cancer-related death. So I will use the S survival data widget to specify which time and event pair I want to explore. First, let's take a look at the overall survival. If I want to use the bioinformatics widget on some data set of genes, I have to pass the data through the genes widget. This will match the names of genes with the NCBI gene database and annotate the data with the appropriate gene codes. Now, the first time you use this widget, it'll have to download all the data from the server, which may take a few minutes. Now that we're done, we can see that each gene has an ID and a short description. But from 24,000 genes, the widget matched only about 18,000. So we'll be working on a slightly reduced data set. With this many features, you might wonder, how do we analyze all of this data? Many biomedical researchers are focused on finding genes that could be used for cancer prognosis. For example, breast cancer researchers have identified the proto-oncogene KRAS as an important factor. There's an article that reported high expressions of KRAS are linked to significantly worse projections for patients in the Metabrick study. And let's try to reproduce one of the Kaplan-Meier plots from this report in orange. Gene expression values are continuous. From our previous videos, we already know that this means we need to define a threshold to form groups to compare survival. Last time we did this, it was with the distributions widget. Here, on the left, I filter the features to find KRAS and then adjust the bin width. The gene expression values in this data set are normalized, so we'll select the values above zero. This should split the data more or less in half. Now I can connect distributions to the Kaplan-Meier plot and rewire the connection to pass on all the data. Remember, Orange's widgets often output subsets as well as complete data sets with annotations. So in the Kaplan-Meier widget, I'll choose Selected for the group indicator and tick the boxes to display the confidence intervals and the median. Now we find the p-value is below 0.005. This indicates that there is indeed a significant difference in the survival curves between patients with KRAS expression above or below zero. The ones we selected on the distribution's graph, those with expressions above zero, are depicted here by the red line. KRAS is a member of the RAS protein family. RAS proteins function as molecular switches for signaling pathways that are critical for several aspects of normal cell growth. But they're mutated in a variety of human tumors. Now, the set of all RAS genes forms a gene set, and gene sets are widely used in studying expression data because they're associated with a specific biological function. 
I want to compare how well other genes in the RAS pathway separate the survival curves of cohorts with regards to KRAS. I'll pass the information from genes to the gene sets widget. I can use this widget for filtering out a specific gene set from our expression data. On the left side, I can select the organism and the gene set database that I'm interested in. Homo sapiens is already marked correctly. The RAS pathway is available through the KEG pathway database. I choose KEG on the right and write RAS in the filter tab. The RAS signaling pathway contains 232 genes, but only 219 have been found in our Metabrick dataset. I click on the pathway to output the filtered genes and their expression values. Now, I connect the output with rank survival features. Previously, we used this widget for ranking clinical features to figure out which ones best separate cohorts according to survival. But this time, we'll use it for ranking genes in a gene set. Now, because gene expression values are numeric, the rank widget forms cohorts by splitting the expression values at the median. Let's order the genes according to the p-value. This way we find that KRAS is only in 33rd place. The gene that is best at separating patients by survival is FLT3. I select this gene by clicking on it. Now, if I want to know what FLT3 actually means, I can pass the information to the genes widget. The protein product of FLT3 expression functions as a receptor tyrosine kinase that is normally expressed on hematopoietic stem cells. Its mutations are well studied in acute myeloid leukemia. However, upregulated FLT3 expression has also been observed in lymph node metastases of patients with primary breast cancer. Now let's go ahead and plot the survival curves defined by FLT3. I pass the output from rank to discretize. On the left, I select FLT3, and on the right, I choose to form intervals of equal frequency. Then I can pass this onto the Kaplan-Meier plot. I group by FLT3 and select to display the confidence intervals and the median. Now we can compare the two plots side by side, one grouping patients according to the expression of KRAS, and the other according to the expression of FLT3. And there's a visible difference. Notice that whereas above-median expression of KRAS is predictive of poor survival, above-median expression of FLT3 is predictive of higher survival probability. And indeed, a quick search through the literature confirms that higher expressions of FLT3 indicate a favorable prognosis in patients with breast cancer. In this video, we explored a dataset containing gene expression values with thousands of genes. We annotated the dataset using the genes widget and used the gene sets widget to filter out genes corresponding to a specific biological function. And lastly, we used the rank survival features widget to discover the gene in a biological pathway whose expression is most predictive of survival. Now, next time in our final survival analysis video, I'll show you how to rank whole gene sets instead of just single genes at a time.